Hey guys, DIY Maniac John P here. In today's video, we're going to be looking at our microwave. In this case, an overrange microwave, but this video will also be applicable to your countertop microwaves as well. If you've ever been in a situation that I'm in currently, that you close the door, you start the microwave, but the turntable doesn't turn, nothing gets heated, chances are it's the door switches that have gone faulty. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to dismantle the machine, how to repair or replace the switches and the steps that are needed to do so. So follow along guys. Step one, make sure you unplug the unit and the power is off. The nice thing with this repair for you guys like me with the over range microwave, we don't need to remove the unit from its location above the stove. First thing we're gonna do is if we come on top of the range, you're gonna look here and we have one, two, three, four Phillips screws. We're gonna remove those and that's gonna allow us to take this top portion off. With that top trim removed, open the microwave door. We look on top of the control panel that we're going to need to remove there's going to be one phillips screw located right here once you remove that this control panel is going to be wanting to tilt forward so hold on to it and there's two retaining clips on the bottom so we're going to remove that screw we're going to lift up on the control panel and separate away careful there's a lot of wire and connectors back there we have to undo so just don't let it drop keep a good hold on it Once we have the control panel released, we have a series of connectors that need to be removed. As always, take some reference pictures before you start disconnecting them. So when you have to put them back together, it'll be easier. Some of these connectors are squeeze type. So there's a clip you have to squeeze to release so you could pull it off. Uh, so like I said, take pictures, keep track of where they're going. Don't force them. We don't want to break the connectors. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. With the control panel removed and all our connectors loose, we can now look inside and we can see our series of three switches. There's one switch on the bottom and two switches, sorry, one switch on the top, two switches on the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and remove that switch assembly. So it's a whole bracket that holds those three switches and it's removed by removing these two Phillips screws, one on top and one on the bottom. And that allows us to remove that switch assembly. The two screws are removed. To remove the assembly, it's hanging on a little like plastic hook. We lift the assembly up, slide it backwards, and that allows us to remove it from the body of the microwave. As you can see, we have a series of different connectors. Each micro switch has two connectors that are gonna need to be removed. Once again, take pictures. Pictures are your friend when it's time to reassemble and to go ahead and remove those now. Okay guys, so here we are with the switch assembly. Now we want to diagnose uh, which of the switches or multiple switches are faulty. So to do that, we're going to use our multimeter. We're going to do continuity checks. If you look at the diagram on the side of the switch, it'll tell you if the switch isn't always open, meaning the circuit is open when the button is not depressed, not allowing electricity to flow, or an always closed, meaning when the button is not depressed, it allows electricity to flow. Once the button is depressed, it breaks that circuit and doesn't and breaks continuity. So with our multimeter, we're gonna put on continuity. Uh, we can take our alligator clips on each lead and we can test the switch. In this case, this isn't always um, open. So right now we're not getting any continuity because the button's not pushed. And once we push the button, we get our continuity flowing through as such. So you're going to do that to each of the switches and test them to find out which one is faulty. Once we isolate the faulty switch, definitely we're going to go ahead and replace it. Or if you're like me and it's over the holidays and you can't find anyone open to get a replacement switch, I'm going to show you how to take this switch apart and fix it yourself. 
In my particular case, I was able to isolate this switch as being the faulty one. This one is an always closed switch. So without the button depressed, it's always allowing electricity to flow until depressed, it opens the circuit and stops and breaks the electricity flow. By checking continuity on the leads, I was able to see that the switch was very intermittent. It wasn't always giving a good uh, signal. So that's the bad one. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and remove that from the, the, the bracket assembly. So you'll see how it's done on this particular switch. There's a little tab we push down that allows us to swing the switch out of the way and lift it up. So if you're like me and you can't get your hands on a new switch, but we want to maybe repair or see if we can repair the internals of the switch, you take yourself a knife or any blunt object and you're going to press it into the seam of the switch and basically pry the body of the switch apart. Be careful, there's a lot of little parts in there that you don't want to come flying out. So take your time with this step and gently work your way around the perimeter of the switch to open it up. Once we're able to open it, we could gently remove the top part of the switch and that thus exposes the internals of the switch. And you can see how that works as we push the button. Right now, our contacts right here are constantly touching. And when we push the switch, the contacts separate and opens up. Release the switch, so as if the door was open, contact is made allowing the circuit to be completed. Now what happens a lot of time on these little micro switches is the little connectors or the pucks as I like to call them become corroded over time. You got to think every time that switch is opening and closing it's causing an arc of electricity and could cause those little contact areas to become fouled. So to clean it all we need to do is take um, a nail file, a small nail file, and we're going to go in between those connectors and we're going to file and clean the surfaces of them. So in this case, we're going to push the button to open up those connectors, take our nail file and just gently go inside and sand the surfaces of those contact areas. And you'll see as you're cleaning it, it'll be black usually. And as you file it slightly, it's going to become more of that bare metal look. So that's giving us a clean connection and that's now going to allow that circuit to properly open and close. That fouling that I had on those contact surfaces was basically breaking the connection and not allowing it to close. Once we clean those connections and we have our switch back together, we could retest. So before when I would hook up my leads, I would get no continuity when I should be as it's an always closed switch. And now, as we can see, when I, I'm holding my finger on the switch, simulating the microwave door is closed, when I release it, I'm getting continuity where I wasn't getting that before. So that's telling me the cleaning I did on the inside is uh, helping the switch make it do its job now. Now, obviously, you're going to want to replace the switch eventually, you know, because it'll just keep happening over time. But at least this is a quick fix to get you out of a pickle, uh, especially when you're over the holidays like me. We can now go and reinstall our switch into the bracket assembly. So you'll see there's a post or peg sticking up that goes into the hole of the micro switch. And then our micro switch swings over and then clicks in place. And there's how the assembly works. So as our door closes, the hook of the door comes in here, pushes this lever to activate that switch. And the hook portion of the door comes down pushing on this switch. And then the same thing on the top. Now you're going to want to go through all your switches and maybe as a precaution, clean them all up, even if they are working, uh, since we're already in here. And that's what I'm going to do now. I have everything put back together. The reinstall is just reversal of what you saw me do when I took it apart. And I'm happy to report everything is working. So my symptoms before was I would close the door. I would start the machine. The light would go on. The turntable wouldn't turn and nothing would heat up. And I'm happy to report now that my turntable's turning and I did put a glass of water in there and it boiled. So guys, that's just a quick little diagnostic and repair of those door switch that you have on your microwaves. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Remember to like and subscribe. I'm gonna see you guys at the next video. Thanks for watching.